Hello, I'm Tom Moore. Un grand bonjour to everyone from France who's joining us. Um, Wolf Walkers will be launched in France on the 16th of December. And uh, thanks to the Centre Cultural Irlande for um, inviting us to take part in this workshop. Um, and thanks to everyone from Ireland who's tuning in and anybody from all over the world. I hope you enjoy uh, this workshop. Um, we're introducing Cartoon Saloon's newest film with Centre Cultural Ireland Day. We're really proud to do that. And I'm going to show you how to draw the main characters, uh, Robin Goodfellow and Maeve O'Kamak-Tira. Hope you enjoy and get your pencils ready and enjoy. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you how to draw Robin Goodfellow, who's the main character in our movie. And the thing about Robin, and in fact all the cartoon characters in our films, is that they're really based on simple shapes. And the simple shapes make it easy for the animators to draw the characters all in the same style. And so once you learn the simple shapes, you can draw the character. And I think you'll even look at other cartoon characters and you'll find they're all based on simple shapes. But we have different shapes for different characters. It says something about their personality. So we're going to draw Robin, and you can see she's based on squares and triangles and rectangles so everything about robin is angular because she's kind of dainty and she's from the town and the towns uh, every character in the town is kind of based on squares and triangles so the very first thing we do when we're drawing a character is we start with the line of action and usually that's to show the direction the character is moving in and we'll do a pose after this to show that but when a character is just standing there straight on the line of action is just straight through the character straight through the character no problem there and then we're going to think about where are we going to put her head. So I think her head is going to be somewhere like this. Yes, we can see we have a little square here. That shows also where her hair ends. And then we can put her face, probably something like this. Now let's think about her body. It's probably a little jelly bean shape inside, but her shirt is a little square up here. And it has two big long pieces that are like triangles that come down like this. Then we can think about her arms. We always have a curve and a straight when we draw a human or really any animal because it shows the side that's bendy and the side that bends. So think about straight versus curve if we can there. Think about her uh, cape is probably there. And we think about her legs. Okay, so we have two rectangles here for her legs down to her knees. Just round it off because it's a piece of cloth. Two triangles for the tops of her boots, two rectangles for the bottom part of her legs, and two triangles for her feet. So those are the simple shapes that Robin is made out of. And now what we do is we go in and we find the shapes that are nested inside those shapes. Oh, we forgot her cape. So her cape is probably just a rectangle like that hanging down. Okay, so that looks like a bit robot-y, but that's basically Robin. And the other thing we might do we might draw her hood up because her hood is another shape. It's like a diamond shape, like that. Okay, so those are the shapes that Robin is made from. And now we can find the middle of her head by drawing a line here. And that shows us the top of her eyes. And her eyes are also kind of a, a diamond shape. With a circle inside. And you'll find that her nose is just a swoop, like this. And she also has a little bit of an overbite. So a little bit of a, of a triangle shape there. And then we can smooth out her cheeks. She's still only a young girl, so she still has kind of chubby cheeks. And she has ears right here. Her ears are right on the line of the eyes. That makes sense. And okay, so we know where her hair goes but we're putting her hood up, so we might put the, the fold of the hood on top. And then using the center line we drew, we can find where her hair parts. And now we can draw her hair, fits inside the hood, also like a, a rounded off square. And then if we want to draw our braids, let's say we draw just one braid in front and one braid behind. We draw the braids, they're like a series of triangles but we think of them like drops that are hanging one from the other where the hair is tied and a triangle at the bottom. Okay, and even for the buckles of the belt or of the shoe, we've got little buckles on the shoe, little triangles for the heel of the shoe. And that's basically the construction of Robin. Now, the thing is, 
this is what we call the animator's rough or construction drawing. And this is how we draw the characters when we're drawing really quickly, just figuring out the movement. But then it's time for the final part. And the final part is we use all these construction lines to make the final line or the cleanup stage of the animation. And that's when we put another page down, or you can take a pen and just draw over it. And we put another page down and we make the final line. So that's when we make a lot of decisions. We kind of clean up the messy drawing. So let's just put another page on top. And if you're an animator, you might have a light on the desk behind. But again, you can probably see through a light page or just rub the pencil down and go over it with a pen. Okay, so we'll take a small pen and we'll make the final line. Now the things you want to be careful with is the eyes. You kind of want to get the eyes right. So we we'll put a little bit of a thicker line on top for her eyelashes. And then we'll put the iris. Usually we leave a little gap, kind of makes the eyes look softer. You'll notice that in a lot of cartoon characters, especially Japanese cartoon characters. It's a little trick, because when we colour it, that part is just white. So now we make the... So now we have her eyes drawn in. Okay, so that's important. Now we find the nose. We draw a straight line. And we follow the curve around. Like a little swoop. Then mouth and then we draw the cheeks and let's make sure she doesn't get too pointy we don't want her to look too pointy we just use a triangle as a basic a basic shape but when we make the final line she can look a little bit more young and childlike now we have to start thinking what's in front of what so if we have her hood up the fold of her hood is going to go straight across everything and we won't see the hair underneath we'll see a little bit of her ear underneath and because her hood is more open on this side, we'll see much more of the ear over here. And we have the line. We had a line of action, a line of inaction in this case, because she's just standing there. And we find that line and we make her hair part from the middle. And she's got nice, neat and tidy hair because she's Robin. When we draw Maeve, we can have much more fun with the hair. Robin's hair is neat and tidy. She's very organized and proper. Okay, so let's draw the let's draw the hood, the bottom of the hood, so we get a line for where the hood is containing all her hair and everything inside. And on this side also, there's the hood. We kind of got the big diamond that we drew underneath, and that's our overall shape. And now we can draw the hair. Comes down to the ang angle of the hood, and it forms a tangent and goes inside. Tangent is something that artists usually avoid, but for Cartoon Saloon we use a tangent is where a line meets another line and it helps make the characters flat. So we like to make a kind of two and a half D effect where the characters move in three dimensions but we draw them as if they're 2D and it creates a really fun effect and it looks a little bit more like the artwork from the time period whenever things the perspective wasn't really as worked out as it is in today's world had a little bit of a kind of warped idea of perspective back then. They were just figuring it out again. So, the hood is going to have to come down to where the neck ends. So we'll continue our diamond shape down here. Continue our diamond shape here. And we'll do a little swoop where it goes over her shoulders. Okay. She's only a little girl, so she doesn't have big uh, shoulders sticking out like her dad. So her shoulders are kind of sloped. So, whoa. There's one arm, and we'll draw the little part of her shirt that's tucked in up at the sternum. That's what's tricky about Robin. Her hips are down here, but she tucks her shirt in up here. And it kind of gives her a super long leg gangly look. And even when she turns into a wolf, you'll notice that she has that same feeling of a little young animal that has such long legs that they don't know what to do with it. Think about Bambi whenever he's learning to walk on the ice. A character like that kind of gangly and young she's not like big and chunky and powerful like when her dad becomes a wolf okay and then we have our curve and then the cuffs of her shirt are more little triangles 
And don't forget, when we draw her hand closed up in a fist, we have to draw the fingers curling in, curling, 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 and the flat of her hand. Okay, there's her hand. So now, it's starting to look like Robin, isn't it? So this is the top, like we've got two triangle shapes here. We have to think which goes on top. So this is the top part. This is the piece of fabric that goes on top of the one underneath. So we draw that first. We use a tangent with the hand to make that line. And now we draw the one that goes underneath and we find the other side. Okay, now if her, if her cape is hanging off her arm from back here, I guess it goes down like this. And all the time we're looking, where is the construction underneath? Can we see what we constructed underneath? Again, her trousers continue straight down the bottom of the fabric. This leg continues straight down to find the bottom of the fabric. Top of the boots. Top of the boots. Draw her boots on the bottom. We take the little chunk out, little triangle out for the heel. Draw the other foot. Now we've got our boots and we have a little funky buckle at the front of the boots that probably she uses to make them tight. And we must finish the cape. And we have to think, where is the cape falling down here? It's down here and down here. So if we were colouring it in, all oh, this will be black in here. Okay, so this isn't the end because we put a thin kind of wonky line everywhere. But for wolf walkers, we have a special line for the people in the town. They kind of have a thick black line that looks a little bit like they've been carved out of wood or they're like a wood block cut. So we can take another pen, maybe a thick one like this, and decide where do we want to put thickness. And usually we, if we imagine the light is above, we think about the lines being thicker where there might be a shadow. So we can put a thicker line here, maybe a thicker line here. And here, always thinking about the underside. Yeah, her nose might be thicker here. That's good, and her mouth. Give her eyelashes a little bit more thickness, and then we can go and do the underside of her jaw with a thicker line. And think about the hair. And what you're basically doing is kind of imagining that she was kind of carved out of a piece of wood, like a woodblock print from the time period. She's got a little shadow under here, good. Maybe we can think about the shadow under here. And if you watch the movie, you'll see that the really powerful characters like the Lord Protector has really thick lines around them. But as Robin becomes more and more friends with the wolves, she becomes more scratchy and more pencily like Maeve. Because all the characters in the forest you drew with pencils to make them look more wild and free and scribbly. So you can use the lines that you draw the characters with to sort of show something of their personality. You see that in comic books more than in animation. Usually in animation, all the characters have the same line more or less, but watch out for comics and certain shows where they actually change the lines of the characters to show something about them. I think it's, it's fun because you can use how you draw the character to tell the audience what kind of a person they are. So you've got lots of things to do that way. You've got shapes course you've got their expressions if they speak you've got their voice and their acting but you also have the lines and also the colors which we won't talk about today but you can think about colors what kind of colors would make a character angry maybe red what kind of characters would make a character seem kind of calm and sleepy maybe a nice blue okay so we have a few smudges but basically we have Robin Goodfellow, more or less as she looks in the movie. And if you followed along, I hope you have a drawing something like that. 
Now we're going to draw Maeve, but we might come back to Robin and do her doing some actions. But we'll draw Maeve first, and she's a lot of fun, and she's very different to Robin. What might be fun is I might draw Maeve on the page beside Robin, and then you can see the difference between how we draw them both, and we can compare them both. This is this is Maeve, but I'm drawing her not really right beside Robin. It's more like she's in front, so Robin was standing back here. Maeve is standing much closer to us because I'm going to draw her much bigger. And she's a lot of fun, and her shapes are so different. So again, she's just going to be standing there, so we'll draw a straight line. Let's have a look at her for a minute before we start. I think it's worth looking at the model sheets of the character to see something about them. So. What can we see about Maeve? Well, one of the first things I notice is she's made completely out of curves. Robin was made out of angles and rectangles and triangles. Maeve is made out of circles and curves, all different shapes, but definitely very different shapes to Robin. So let's have a go at drawing her and see what else we learn about her as we draw her. Okay, so with Maeve, we have our line of action. It's rare that she stands still, but we'll have her standing still here just so that it's easy to figure out. And she has a circle for a head. Pretty easy. You'll find a lot of cartoon characters have circles for a head. And she has a kind of jelly bean body. Kind of draw an egg or a jelly bean. Um, and she has kind of little stumpy roundy feet. And a straight line on one side, but curvy line on the other side for her legs. Okay, she's got a little fist in this hand. So she's a little tufty. Maybe we'll draw this hand just straight. Little trick when you think about hands is if you draw Robin's hand, you draw a leaf like this. And then you can draw the thumb inside. And then you can draw the palm. And all the fingers fit inside like that. And if you draw Maeve's hand, you might draw kind of an oval shape. And you can put the thumb inside, the palm like that. And she has little sausagey fingers like this. So you can see the difference in the two characters, even in the way we draw their hands, you know. Robin might seem a little bit more dainty, a little bit more delicate. And Maeve is a bit more roughy tufty And the fun thing about Maeve, of course, is her hair. It's like a big teardrop or a big swooshy shape like this. She's got crazy mad hair everywhere. And she has circles for earrings. She's got big hoopy earrings and her eyes are a little cup handle or her ears are little cup handles and her eyes just like Robin fit somewhere in the middle of her face. So we draw one eye here, one eye here, little circle for her nose of the cheeks. Think about her dress is just hanging from up here. She doesn't wear her belt quite as high as Robin, almost. She has her belt up high here. So her waist is down here and her belt is up here. It kind of gives her a little bit like she's sticking her belly out. So the basic shapes there. That's basically Maeve. Um, and she's a pretty simple character to draw simple shapes with, and that means she's a lot of fun to move around and to animate. But now we're going to do the second part, and that's putting the shapes that are nested inside the big shapes. This is when we can really find the character, find her personality. So let's start with the eyes. It's a good place to start. Got the construction down. Let's make sure we've got her eyes. Now maybe has got interesting eyes. She's a little bit wolfy, even as a human. I like to give her really intense eyes. And sometimes what we do, or all the time what we do, is we think about this line here and this line here. And we put a little darkness here, a little darkness here. It gives her that little bit of an animal-like quality to her eyes. We never give her eyebrows, but we give her scratchy lines coming off her eyes. Makes her look a little bit wolfy. These scratchy lines part of her personality and then even though she's got a little round button nose we make it a little bit like the end of a dog's nose or of a wolf's nose like that and we put her little smile there what's fun about Maeve is she has this marking where she's probably wiped her nose so much 
that she's created this marking on her face that is also there when she's a wolf. And she has like little tattoos here, little circle tattoos, little face markings. They also stay when she's a wolf. So these are all the little indications that mean we recognize her when she's a wolf. And she has a kind of widow's peak in her hair. So if we use the center line, we can draw the peak of her hair. So Robin's hair goes up really high. The center, Maeve's center line is a bit lower. Again, all these things make her look a little bit more wolfy, a little bit wilder than Robin. And this ear, just like the, um, a cup handle maybe. And on this ear, we do the same thing, but we show a little chunk has been taken out. I think she's been bitten by a wolf sometime or something happened that she has a little chunk makes her look kind of wild and now we can think about her earrings they're attached to the bottom of her ear she's got a little hoop earrings and if we think about her dress the sleeves are short they're here and here and she even has some little bites taken out of her dress they're a bit messy she has a little that's the belt thing Think about her arm, okay, so she's got a little chubby arm. She wears these little wraps like bracelets around her arms. And her fist, as we said, can be made from a circle. And this hand can be made from four little sausage fingers and a circle. And then don't forget the bracelet on this arm too. And what's fun about Mavo, oh yeah, she's got bare feet. So she's got like little toes in there and we always scribble in to show that her feet are all mucky from running in the muck all the time. And the fun thing about Maeve is we don't do a big black line on her. We leave the construction lines in and that makes her look kind of wilder. So we don't actually go over and clean up, we just darken some lines here and there. And that way you can kind of, if you look closely at the animation, you can see all her construction lines. You can see the shapes that we use to draw her. They pop on and off where the animators left the drawing, the, the construction lines in. And that's part of the style of Maeve, which is kind of fun. Because if you pause any frame, you'll be able to see how to draw her. But we're going to have some fun because her hair is great fun. She's got hair sticking up here. She's got this big swoopy shape got lines that we can use to show the shape of her hair. Big swoopy lines and they can be scribbly and messy. They should just have a nice flow to them. And then because she's always, I always like to shade in her eyes a little bit too. Um, and because she's always running through the forest and getting caught in branches and in trees and stuff like that, she always ends up with some leaves stuck in her hair. So we can put some of these leaves in here different shaped leaves from different trees sometimes we put a flower in her hair that robin gave her the flower is a circle with a circle inside and then we make the petals so as you can see absolutely everything is made from simple shapes and that helps the animators to draw the character over and over again and no matter who draws the character she looks the same so we kind of need everyone to draw with the same style when we all work on a movie together so that's why we designed the characters so they're easy to draw over and over again, or as easy as possible. So you can have a lot of fun putting different, I sometimes put some oak leaves in there. You can have a lot of fun putting different stuff stuck in her hair. And that's Maeve, and you can see the difference between how they both look. Okay, so what if we wanted to put Maeve in a pose, a characteristic pose? We can see she has lots of different expression. But I like, let's try and do this angry one, because that looks fun. She looks like she's got, like a wolf. And we can also do something like, we can make the lines much more angry and scratchy because she's angry. So let's try and draw her in that pose. So just, just one example of a pose. Or maybe let's mix this pose with this pose. Let's draw it from the side so we have a nice clear line of action. But instead of being happy, we'll give her this angry pose. I think let's, let's do a mixture of these two poses. Now, a nice clean page. Let's start. Let's do it. Okay, here's the ground. She's on the ground. Let's do a nice line of action. So she's... Let's think about her. Nice line of action. Go. 
Okay, uh, let's get her head in there. That's cool. Let's make sure we've got room for her hair. Yeah, we do. That's looking cool. Let's draw the jelly bean over her body. Uh -huh. There it is. She's leaning on this arm, so we put the weight on this arm. That's cool. We put this foot down. Great. There's one foot and one arm. That's where she's putting all her weight. So this arm, this leg can be much lighter. The foot can be pointing down. Okay, there's her butt. There's her chest. And we put the other arm. Hmm. We could put it forward going grrr. Or we could put it back. Let's just put it back for clarity. So we put it back here. And we can make her, her fingers look kind of pointy. Her chest. Okay, okay. Her dress is stretched across here. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's come up with a good expression. Her, her, her. Yeah, I like that one. Grr. Eyes are squashed into this expression. Or if you make a small mistake, because you can change it while it's all still rough. I just go over the lines to get them on, to give her some sharp teeth. Yeah, that looks like a fun expression. Yeah, that looks like a scary maze. Okay, as we're drawn from the side, we need to find the middle of her head again. There's her eyes, so that's where her ear must be. The ear on this side has a chunk out of it, so we do that. The earring is here. Let's get her earring. Okay, this looks good. We need a little bit more hair up here. But all the lines are following that line of action that make her look really aggressive. Like she's scaring somebody off with a scary expression. Almost turning into a wolf. She kind of has black lips as well, like a dog. Okay. Don't forget her belt. She's probably moving forward so fast that her belt is swinging back. leaning on her hand so think about that as well as her foot is this foot is behind this arm there's her dress swooping back okay starting to see how she looks see how we just draw the details everything is nested inside the big shapes so we draw the big shapes first and sometimes animators work so fast that they have an assistant and they just draw the big shapes and they get all the big rough shapes in place and then the assistant goes and puts in the details and so that way the animator can just focus on the fast movement and then the assistant animator goes and puts all the details and makes sure everything's in the right place but when you're just learning you kind of have to be your own assistant it's a good way to learn there's all the hair, and like I said, because she's angry, we can make angry lines. Grr. Make the leaves in her hair kind of angry too. Okay, eyes look really angry. Ah, she looks pretty scary. So there you get the idea. We have a, a pretty angry maze. Now, let's use the same idea to draw Robin in a different pose. 
And you can draw them basically doing anything you want because you've learned the simple shapes now. Um, so that means you can make the characters go into any, really any position you like. But let's take a look at some poses from the movie. Okay, so this is a scene I animated actually at the beginning where Robin jumps down from her be bunk bed and lands on the ground and she's after telling Merlin, she's talking to Merlin and saying, see that Merlin? Right on the nose. So she's here she's really proud of herself. Here she's just after landing. Here she's jumping down. And here she's hiding the crossbow behind her back because dad has just come in. So lots of different expressions. I kind of like this one because she looks proud and she has a nice line of action that we can see that she's proud. And it's a good way to think about all the little shapes that she's made out of. So let's let's try and draw this Robin. Okay. Draw her. Maybe maybe I'll draw her being really proud like this, but I might give her closed eyes. Yeah, I think I might close her eyes like she's doing a big smile. Yeah, maybe that would be easy. And that might be a nice way to show that she's really proud of what she's done. Okay, so here's the ground she just landed on. Here's her line of action. She's really proud. I'm going to make her even more proud than she was in the model sheet. Here's her face. Yeah, there's her face. She's going to be really proud. Her eyes are closed. She's so proud. She's got a really big smile. She's like really proud of herself. Her hair is parted in the center. Yeah, I can see her there. I can imagine the jelly bean of her body with her chest po poking out. Yeah, I can see that. And maybe her legs would be also like this, proud. Yeah, she's really proud. Mm -hmm. There's her trouser leg. Then there's the little bottom part of her coat. And she's really proud. You just draw really sketchy and rough, and that way you can find the drawing. The best thing is not to be too tight and be really loose at the start and get lots of movement into it, into your drawing, lots of curves and all the ang shapes. And then you go back, and even with an angular character like Robin, it's no problem. You need some curves to get the feeling, and then you can go back and put all the angles in later. Now the only part I didn't think about yet was her arms. So she's holding a crossbow. So we need to draw this arm here. And then we draw the crossbow here. That's the hand there. And then we have this hand holding the crossbow. Yeah, I think that's going to work pretty good. And her cape is kind of following the curve of her. So even though she's an angular character, we have put a good few curves in it. It shows her movement, it shows she's happy. We don't really get curves in some characters, like if you think about the soldiers, they don't really curve, they're always like kind of like robots or something. They're so uptight. But Robin is angular, but she still has a lot of life in her. So we have to find those curves inside her. Okay, so now we have her hood. And don't forget, this is in front. So sometimes it's good to color it in to remember what's in front and what's behind. And then remember that she has eyelashes. And she's very happy. They've kind of got teeth that stick out a little bit at the front. She's really happy. Hair is flying back. Her neck is here. Maybe I put her. Maybe I need to remember that her shoulder is probably here. But there's her hair. Yeah, I think I. I think I put her body too far forward. That's better. That's where her shoulder should be. The cross of her chest line. This hand is holding the crossbow like that, and this hand is holding it like that. She 
as a little mini crossbow. A little child size crossbow for hunting. I think this is starting to look like Robin. She's really happy with herself. And that looks like her. So even though it's really scratchy, because she's Robin, we'll do a final line on top. So just put a page on top. Well, maybe we need to tidy it up a bit more before we do the final line. Those legs look really messy. Okay, she's got a triangle. There's another triangle for that foot. Okay. We put the page on top. And you can do this, use this plan, use these simple shapes and your line of action, and you can draw or do anything you want. Actually, I see I need to make a correction here. I'm going to just do a little note for myself with pencil. I think her knees are down way too low. Bring your knees up here. Yeah, that's better. Because if you think about her leg in there, that's her knee, and that's the bottom part of her leg. So I can just use a light pencil line, and if we were really making it for the movie, we would rub out the, the correction afterwards and yeah, just leave the pencil line behind. But yeah, I can kind of see. I did a very rough sketch, but I can kind of see how I'm going to make the, the final clean up. Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe I need to think about her hood a little bit. Yeah. Okay, now I'm ready to make the final line. So, we get, we get the eyes right. Let's make sure the eyes are... My lashes. Their eyes are closed, they're kind of squinting and making little semicircles. That's the eyebrow. She's got a big smile. What's fun with Robin is she can have really big, cartoony expressions, and then when we go back over it and put the lines on, she comes back on style. She's just as lively and has so much personality, just like Maeve. But everything is kind of contained because everything has to fit back into these lines that make her style. And that's why by the end of the movie, we let her hair come out of the braids and her hair is flowing and we get rid of her hood and she gets rid of her crossbow because she doesn't want to hurt wolves anymore. And she becomes much more like Maeve. If you notice at the end of the movie, Robin has become much less kind of constricted. Her hair isn't tied up. Her, her outfit is just a, a dress. She's gotten rid of all these tight pants and tight clothes and all these little things that are keeping her kind of cooped up, trying to be somebody that she isn't much more free by the end of the movie and then we did her neck there okay so now we can put her cape in place that makes sense and let's let's think of her chest is here and we did our line of action here i don't think the cross should be there i think the cross should be here that's gonna these are like the laces that hold her shirt on they also kind of show the shape that her chest is in. Now we can make the arm. Don't forget her little cuffs. What's funny is that when we first designed Robin, she was going to be a boy. And then we decided to make her a girl. And it was fun because we just kept the girl's clothes from when she went, or the boy's clothes from when she was hunting. And it showed a little bit of her personality, that she didn't care 
what was supposed to be the proper clothes for a girl. She just wanted to do what her dad did and she wanted to be a hunter like her dad. So it's kind of partly a little expression of her inner inner strength that she wears hunter's clothes at the beginning. So even though they're quite restricting, it shows a little bit of her inner strength. She puts on an outfit that's not usually worn by girls in this society. And we got our crossbow and the string of the crossbow. Do a very simple version of a crossbow because we have to draw her using it a lot, so it's really just a symbol of a crossbow. It's tricky to draw a fully detailed crossbow all the time. Cartoons simplify everything, so we can draw them over and over again. Don't forget all the basic shapes that we use to construct, they're still there. And don't forget that we're thinking which go which part goes in front of the other. Because <laughs> by overlapping the shapes, we create a kind of two and a half D depth. We kind of show what goes in front and what goes behind. So it's not really three D three dimensional, but it's not really two dimensional either. It's kind of two and a half D. And that's the kind of style that we like to have for this movie. Okay, so we've put the main lines in, and I think she's pretty clear. And let's just bring her a little bit more on style by doing the thicker lines that we that we know are part of this movie style. Oh, wrong pen. If you're using a pencil, you can just go back over and make thicker lines with the pencil. But if you're using a pen, you might want to use a thicker nib for the final lines. I think she's actually laughing. She's more than proud. She's chuckling. She's so happy with the job she just did. Firing her arrow perfectly at her target. Nice swoop. Don't forget as well, you can color the character. That'll also give it a lot more depth and presence. I don't have time to do that now, but if you look at the movie, you can see the colours for the character. They give it a lot more solidity when they're coloured in. Put the line under here. Some thick lines. It is a bit wonky. You can take your time and be a bit more careful than me because I'm going a little bit too fast. But I don't want to be boring. I'm sure you can take your time and slowly make all your lines as carefully as you can. So that doesn't turn out quite as wonky, but I kind of like wonky drawings too. They look kind of lively and they look kind of like. You can feel a person drew them, not a robot, not a computer. That's nice. A little bit of wonkiness is nice. Shows it's kind of handmade. But basically, there's Robin. And you can spend your time. Another little trick you can do to make it look more woodblock is sometimes we put an extra thick line, like something like that here and there. And there's special artists in the studio, they're called Crino, or Final Line Artists, and they specialise in making really nice effects and very perfect lines and making sure that the animators didn't make any mistakes when they were drawing the character. And that's their whole job. And uh, nobody really remembers them, but they're the most important people in a way because it's their drawings that are on screen. They're the ones that make the final drawings on screen. The animators just make the guide. 
but the final line or cleanup artists make the final drawings that are on screen that you see moving. So your job is very important. And I don't think I'd get a job in their department. My lines aren't very perfect, but maybe if you practice, you could end up being a final line artist. So anyway, there's Robin Goodfellow, and she's having a good chuckle to herself. And um, I hope you enjoyed this little workshop, and I hope you have a lot of fun trying to draw our characters. And I hope you enjoy the movie Wolfwalkers. So thanks again.